My name is Marguerite Ross, but many people call me Mary. I got the name in Academy. You know how Academy kids are. <laughs> anyway, for many years, I was a teacher here at Andrews University. I taught full-time in the elementary school and part-time in the college as well. I do not remember all the class sizes, but usually around 30. One year, I had 46 graders all year long and 40 in my college class. And I was turning 40 that summer. <laughs> but my 40th birthday was down in the mountains of Chiapas, Mexico, where I was teaching English for the summer. <laughs> As you know, the elementary school on Andrews campus was eventually named the Ruth Murdoch School. It had other names before, the Demonstration School, the Lab School, the Emmanuel Missionary College Elementary School, the Andrews University Elementary School, and so on. But 40 years ago, last month, it received officially its name, Ruth Murdoch Elementary School. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Ruth Murdoch and why they chose her name for the school. She was Dr. Ruth Murdoch. Um, she had a doctorate in child psychology and it was my joy and privilege and some a little bit scary to be the teacher of her youngest son, Bill Murdoch, who grew up to be a child psychiatrist and so on. I'd like to tell you a couple of stories about Dr. Ruth Murdoch and her work with children. One of her favorite sayings was, all behavior is caused. If you want to change the behavior, you must discover the cause. And one year, we had a young fellow in sixth grade who was having all kinds of behavior problems. His name was Kevin. And we didn't know what, his, what was causing this distressing. He was distressed, and he caused us sometimes to be distressed. And so we sent him over to see Dr. Ruth Murdoch. And after several tries, she discovered what was bothering this boy. His grandmother, who lived in the local area, his grandmother had rheumatoid arthritis, and her feet and hands were crippled terribly. And Kevin loved to play sports. Can you imagine trying to catch baseballs or whatever with that? And he was terrified that he, that that same thing would happen to his hands and feet. That was causing his distress. 
but it took her to find it out, but she did. And sometime later, I was in distress. I had been away all summer, and a young lady had been living in my home. And I came back, of course, in time to get ready for preschool week before school started. And I had an opportunity to drive up north to a friend's for the weekend before I had to start preschool week. And this young lady had been contemplating what I had no idea of. A friend who was the counselor had tried to talk her out of it, but unsuccessfully. And I received a phone call up north at my friend's home to tell me there had been a suicide in my garage. So you can see, to start the school year was quite stressful. And Dr. Ruth knew that. About Thanksgiving time, a father came to me and told me he'd like to take his little girl because he was going to make a trip and he wanted to have the children. He was going to visit his father and family and he wanted to have his children with him. So he picked up the children after school and drove all night, rolled the car, the little girl was thrown. She had an aneurysm in her brain, which burst. I received word Tuesday. I knew that she might not recover. It was pretty scary. So I shared this with the children that she had been badly injured. And a lot of praying went on, not only for her recovery, but for them to deal with it. She did not recover. On Wednesday morning, I received word that she did not recover. I did not tell the children immediately because it would be too difficult to keep them in the classroom. And so I told them shortly before they were to be dismissed. I think I removed everything from her desk, but that's all I did. I went home, and who came to visit me either that evening or soon after, but Dr. Ruth Murdoch and her son Bill came to my home. And as they were talking with me, Bill said to me, what have you done with her desk? And I said, I've only cleared it. I haven't done anything with it. What should I do? And Dr. Ruth Murdoch spoke up immediately and said, ask the children. So on Monday, after the holiday, I sat down with them and 
talk with him. And after morning worship, I asked him what I should do with Kim's desk. And they said, leave it here, right where it is. So I did. Sometime later, maybe even a couple of weeks later, we needed an extra chair for a little group that we were meeting together. And I said to one of the girls, well, get Kim's chair. And David spoke up immediately, no, no, don't sit in that chair. You'll die. And Princess said to him, No, David, I won't die. And she went quietly and got the chair, brought it up and added it to the group and quietly sat down in the chair. He didn't say any more. And we got a new student. And sometime later, he was going to touch that chair. And again, David spoke up, no, don't sit in that chair. And he said, David, this isn't Kim's chair anymore. I have been sitting in Kim's chair for two weeks. It fitted me better than this one. Do you see how wise she was? The children understood. They knew what it was all about. There was no mystery. But this one boy needed that assurance that there was no magic about that chair. Nobody sitting in it would die. Sometimes children listen to their peers better than they listen to adults. They can't seem to remember that adults were once children. <laughs> and, and so they sometimes think we don't really understand them. And so they believe sometimes appear before they believe the adult because they can't grasp that idea that we have been children ourselves. That's the kind of person Ruth Murdoch was. No matter what child or adult needed her counsel, she was able to help.